today we're going to relax in the beautiful town of Zemun. In this episode, we will check out some markets, drink lots of coffee, and visit several breathtaking sites. But before we head to Zemun, there's a few places we want to visit, so let's get started. When we first arrived at the bus station, the first thing we saw was this amazing and huge Sava Square. We knew we had to come back with a lot less stuff. In the center is a monument dedicated to Stefan Nemanja, one of the most important rulers of Serbia. It stands 23 meters high and weighs over 60 tons. It's definitely a tourist attraction. And what I really love is the small details of artwork in and around the monument. Yep. <laughs> so eventually, once I figured out where to go, we headed towards a historic green market. Just like any other tourist, I'm fascinated with markets. What's really interesting is that this place is over a hundred years old. Just admiring the fresh produce of veggies, fruit, meat, spices, and homemade snacks, it's a really great place to wander around for an hour or so. So after a quick coffee, and of course some cake, we ran to the next place, St. Mark Orthodox Church. Faster. completed in the 1940s. This monumental five-domed church, standing over 60 meters high, is a must-see when in Belgrade. The artwork alone is absolutely amazing to see up close. When we first arrived in Zemun, our first impression was how beautiful and different it is to the rest of Belgrade. It's definitely a town with a lot of character and its own unique charm. Along the river are many cafes providing places to relax with great views. Since this was near the end of March, the weather was finally getting better, so we sat down near the waterfront and enjoyed some long overdue sunshine. It's a really nice, calm and peaceful place to relax.
In this beautiful Zeman market, you can find all sorts of daily caught fresh fish, as well as other produce such as fruit and veggies. Also, there's all sorts of flowers being sold here as well. It's really nice to see all the variety of colorful fresh flowers on sale. This time we wanted to try some domestic coffee, Serbian style, and the locals here are super nice to tourists. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know? Just got your free coffee. Just random like free coffee. I had I wanted to pay but he was fighting it so <laughs> So Domatsa Kafa. This Serbian coffee? Yeah, Serbian mm -hmm. coffee. Smell like with alcohol. <laughs> wow. How is it? It's good, like the <laughs> Wow. So Serbian Hospitality, this guy gave us a free coffee. It's super nice, we said we just want to try it. Um, what's it called? Domatsa Kafa. Domatsa Kafa. Oh, it's very Bye. sweet and strong, yeah. You almost leave something on the palate of your mouth. It's really nice. It's really good. Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't pretend it's easy. So easy. <laughs> So many more stairs to go. You know what I hate? Stairs. <laughs> so when we finally made it up the stairs, we were welcomed with this amazing view of the town. Behind us is Gardos Tower. It was built in 1896 to celebrate a thousand years of Hungarian settlement. You can walk up to the top to see more amazing views of Belgrade. And they also have a small exhibition inside as well. We were getting tired, so we had a quick rest stop at this pub, also with amazing views. And once again, we experienced that friendly Serbian hospitality. restaurant if you like something like that and uh, this is me pen and paper guy you could have me and ask me whatever you want <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much you know It's like a piece of history. Like what's that again? Like the Balkan architecture? This was this was first written down that it was uh, first mentioned in 1658 as the White Bear Tavern. It's probably one of the oldest in Belgrade. So interesting. <laughs> I think um, the fortress though would be older, definitely, but still, the fact that it's still remaining is pretty cool. After that bad history lesson, we ended our day at this restaurant. Here we went with the waiter's recommendation and got piggy with prunes and this turkey dish with homemade pastry. I've never heard of this turkey dish before, but it was packed full of flavor and we both truly enjoyed it. Also, these homemade Serbian cookies that I really struggled to pronounce were really nice. Serbian cookies, vanilitsa. You have jam. Again, vanilitsa. Vanilitsa. Mm -hmm. Serbian cookies. 
with homemade jam, fennel litzer. <laughs> Serbian cookies, vanilitze. We of course had some rakia. I have a little side story here, so let's go back in time when we first arrived in Belgrade. So when we first arrived, we were young and carefree, just enjoying ice cream. But then we stopped at this sidecar, where I tried rakia for the first time and everything changed. Actually, nothing really changed, except me being embarrassed, very embarrassed, because I didn't know you had to sip it slowly. So make sure you don't slam it down and save yourself some embarrassment. One quick note though, this street where I tried rakia is a beautiful picturesque street where you can listen to live music while you eat some great food. It can be a romantic fun dinner if you don't mind live music right next to you as you eat. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I have one more episode about Belgrade before we move on to the next country. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.